Somewhere at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, stuck in a sunken submarine, might be my mom's baby shoes. It's one of the more famous stories from my family, so I thought I'd share, and also for the sake of Team C's. The baby shoes were put there for good luck by my mom's dad, my grandfather, who had been a sailor on the submarine USS Pompano for five years during World War II. In fact, he was on it only a handful of miles away from Pearl Harbor when that base was attacked on December 7th, 1941. He and the rest of the Pompano's crew arrived later that day, then were quickly sent back out to sea to go to war. Sailors on submarines needed all the luck they could get. During World War II, the U.S. Navy's submarine service suffered the highest casualty percentage of all the American armed forces losing one in five personnel. In September of 1943, that stat caught up to the Pompano, which never returned home from its seventh war patrol. What happened to it? And how is it that 78 years later, with all our amazing technology, the wreckage of this submarine has never been found? And how is it that my mom's lucky baby shoes didn't survive, but my grandfather did? Let's rewind to September 1943, just off the northern tip of Higashidori, Japan. The Pompano was on its seventh war patrol, basically like a multi-week military mission. And this time, it was sent right into the home waters of the enemy. Communication technology back then, of course, wasn't what it is today. So submarines operated totally on their own. It's one reason why submarine warfare was called the silent service. So the American Navy didn't know anything was wrong with the Pompano until around October 5th, when the sub and its crew of 78 didn't come back to base at Midway Island. That's how people would often find out the fates of lost submarines and their sailors back then. They just didn't return. You can imagine the nervousness and dread as friends and loved ones watched the horizon and waited with hours and days going by. Today, there are two leading theories as to what happened to the Pompano. The first comes from Japanese military records. A report states that on September 17, 1943, at around 7.30 in the morning, just off the coast of Shirazaki, one of their seaplanes spotted an oil slick on the water that appeared to be moving, as if from a damaged submarine underneath. The plane dropped two depth charges on the slick until it stopped moving. The only U.S. sub known to be in the area was the Pompano. The next day, five Japanese ships arrived at the oil slick and spent the day dropping depth charges on it. This brought up more gushing oil, which was a telltale sign of a submarine's underwater destruction. Sounds like that was probably the Pompano, right? Well, get this. In 2014, an American Navy dive team went down and searched the area where those five ships dropped charges and they did find wreckage. But after taking measurements and looking more closely, they realized it was clearly not a US submarine. It was some other much smaller vessel. So what about the second theory? It's very possible that the Pompano struck a mine. Mines were basically floating bombs and both the Japanese and the US used them in the water to wreak havoc on passing ships and submarines. Mines were laid all throughout the seas of Japan to defend it, and submarines really didn't have the technology to detect them. So it's possible, while cruising along, getting ready to go home, with maybe half the crew asleep, there was a horrific explosion, and the Pompano and its sailors were sent to the bottom. Mines were one of the many terrible tools of war used by both sides. In 1945, the U.S. laid 2,000 of them from B-29s into Japanese shipping lanes, causing all kinds of destruction. Well, as for my grandfather, the Pompano had been his workplace and home. But after five years on the submarine, he was transferred prior to its last mission. On his way out, gathering his things, he forgot to grab his daughter's baby shoes, which may have still been aboard when the Pompano went down. 
But of course, what weighed much more heavily for him was the loss of his friends and fellow sailors. The Pompano and its crew still lie somewhere in the depths of the Pacific, likely just a few miles off the coast of Higashidori. But it's one of thousands of locations in our oceans where so many sailors from so many ships and countries met their end. These places are war graves to remember and respect, no matter where they are. I decided to tell this story in support of Team Seas, an effort to clean up 30 million pounds of trash from all our oceans and their sacred places. So I hope you'll consider clicking the link in the description and contributing what you can.